Hi, it's the 23rd of February 2017, one month till the equinox. A week or two until things in theory can be planted out in the garden, or sown in the garden. But at the moment it's so windy, I don't think anything could go out there. The Christmas tree got blown over and I thought I'll leave it there till the gales stop because if I stand it up it'll only blow over again. The little patch of snowdrops has been wonderful this year. And look at this calabrese that I left in the pot. It's producing more little flowers. I don't know if they're edible, they might be a bit chewy. The calabrese on the allotment, on the other hand, has been providing picnics for pigeons. And I think it's about time I removed this lot and covered it over with more mulch. I planted some seeds in the propagator a few weeks ago just to see what would happen. This is coriander. It's got a bit leggy, although I did take it out as soon as it started to sprout. And this is snow peas. I suppose the secret's in the name. If they're snow peas, they must be okay to grow in the winter time. So I thought I'd start some off. And they're climbing peas. So I think they have an excuse for being leggy. And then behind them, there's some leeks, I think that is. I always remember to put the leeks in far too late and then there's never any space to plant them and so I thought this year I'm going to start really early and give them the best possible start. I can always plant more later after all. There they are. And then next to them I've got some tomatoes. I thought I'd start early with them as well. I've got three different varieties. Tom Roma, Tom uh, Bountiful and something else. I made these labels out of a yoghurt pot and it's a bit hard to write on them with a ballpoint. Which ones of you should die and which ones should live? Oh, how can I possibly decide? Well, obviously you can't have three together like that. Oh, well, they came out okay and since this one's more central, I think this one's got to come out. So I've thinned them down to one per cell, except for this one. I just hooked my finger around the damn thing and it came out, so that's an empty cell. Too bad. We only probably want two or three tomato plants. I don't know. We'll see. It's about 12 degrees, so I'm not sure I need the propagator for a lot of things at the moment. I could, actually, I've got, I've got some calabrese and some sprouting broccoli and they could actually go into pots in the um, conservatory just straight onto the windowsill up there. They'd be fine in this kind of temperature. So this is the propagator. I've prepared some cells there. I haven't planted anything yet. I have to decide what to plant. This is chives. They've germinated. And this is Chinese chives and they haven't. I wonder if it's too warm for the Chinese chives. I must check on the internet what they need to germinate. This is our conservatory windowsill. A few bulbs that Chris rescued um, and his lemon tree which he claims is filling the air with a wonderful lemon flower perfume which I can't actually smell it just smells like wet cardboard to me in here look how many flowers that's got his pride and joy he has this fantasy of plucking a lemon off the tree and putting it in gin and tonic for the guests Actually, there's two lemons ripening up. That's quite good. Oh, and another one up there. Lots of gin and tonic. I've come to check on the allotment and people are coming and doing bits of work. It looks as though both the derelict allotments next to us have actually been taken over. The guy a while back, he's levelled the grass and made bonfires and planted a couple of fruit trees on the edge. The next one, we didn't think anyone had taken it over, but there is a pile of pallets, which is suggestive. Plus, they've actually removed the collapsed shed that was there further back. On my new allotment, you can see a dusting of fresh green grass coming through. So there's no question this needs another layer. I've been over it with a hoe, hacking all the grass off, and it just is coming through again. The only question is what to use to cover it. I could order some more green waste compost which is very fine and dusty and will fill all the cracks and completely exclude the light um, which I could, it'll cost me about 60 quid and the guy probably won't bring it right into the allotment because he moans about the mud and his wheels slipping on the mud so we'd have to barrow it all in so that's a lot of work another option would be to use hay or straw 
The idea of using hay seems completely counterintuitive because of all the hay seeds and you'd have stuff growing in it. Well, I don't know because Ruth Stout swore by hay and she used hay for years and years and apparently had no problem with it. Poor sad cabbages. Somebody or something kicked over the wire and the pigeons have evidently got at them and I think some insects been eating the leaves as well. They're looking a bit lacy. So I don't know if anything will come of those. I see there's still a few Brussels sprouts that I might finish off before the pigeons get them. And the broad beans are starting to grow up really nicely. They should be good with their wind protection of um, corn stalks. I was going to grow beans up those corn stalks, but I see the wind's been blowing them over a bit and I'm not sure they'll last a season. And there's my garlic still growing bravely amongst the chickweed, which I can't bring myself to pull up because it'll only grow again. And maybe I need to mulch this area again once I decide what to mulch with. Now here's another question, the plum tree. Last year it started to have plums for the first time, it's quite a young tree. And guess what, every single plum had a little bright pink grub in it, which I discovered is a, a, a plum maggot, a new variety that's come over from Europe. And I would hate for the same thing to happen again this year. What I don't know is, will it happen? And do I have to go to the trouble of getting pheromones and spraying the tree? I don't know, I haven't decided yet. So I've popped some broccoli seeds in there. These four rows of cells are calabries. With my super duper labels, you can read that at least. And these three are broccoli the kind of sprouting broccoli kind. I planted a bit more calabrese than broccoli because I have memories of having to eat broccoli as a child and my mother grew this thing called purple sprouting broccoli which seemed to be all stalk and it was quite chewy and not that delicious but it's good to have variety. So that's it for now, see you soon, bye!